This is the EasyBook X4, a super affordable, well specced 14 inch laptop that offers more value than the likes of a Samsung Chromebook 3, a 14 inch HP Stream, or even a 14 inch Acer Aspire 1, all of which, by the way, cost more and are running older hardware and only offer about a third of the storage than the EZBook X4 brings to the table. So, is this £200 laptop worth buying? Let's talk about that. <laughs> So currently at the time of filming this video, the lowest price I've seen on the X4 is £217. As always, check the link in the video description if you want to learn more, or if there's an offer code for it, I'll have it linked in there as well. Anyway, in terms of unboxing, it comes in a brown cardboard box, there's nothing special about it, and if we whiz through it, the only thing you're going to find inside is one box, and inside that you will find the power adapter. You will need an adapter to convert it from US to Europe to wherever you are in the country, so a handy dandy travel plug adapter like this will be useful. Now one thing that really came as a surprise while I was unboxing this laptop was I realised this thing has got HDMI 2.0, I really wasn't expecting it, that was definitely a nice little discovery. It was a little bit strange though because anywhere that I actually looked, Jumper did not mention this on any of their marketing material but regardless, this is a good thing and I guess I should stop moaning. The EZBook X4 is an updated version of the 3L Pro but this new offering comes with the latest 2018 Gemini Lake Celeron N4100, no N3450 here this is a quad core cpu this laptop does have lower amount of ram but it's faster ram it's got four gigabytes of ddr4 however this is soldered so you cannot upgrade the ram so maybe that's a little bit of a drawback but on a 200 pound laptop you shouldn't be upgrading stuff most of the time anyway uh, 128 gigabyte ssd is also included and on the bottom of the laptop we also have an m.2 so if you want to expand the storage even further or you can just stick in a micro sd card this laptop also has two usb 3.0 ports nice a micro micro HDMI out, a micro SD card slot that can take a 256 SD card. It also has a 1920 by 1080p TN panel and we'll talk about that screen later on. The battery is actually rated at 11,000 milliamps and this laptop runs full Windows 10 home. In the looks department, the X4 has a slim, sleek, modern design, kind of like a MacBook. I mean, it's a pretty thin laptop by 2018 standards. In terms of the thickness, once the laptop is closed, it only measures 7.5 to 13 millimeters of the thickest part of the body. The body of the outer case is a matte aluminium and metal chrome construction with polished edges and accents, which gives it kind of a high quality look and feel about it. Considering it's a value oriented product, I personally quite like the look of this laptop. The X4 also has a built-in webcam, which happens to be 2 megapixel. It's got dual microphones on either side of the camera, and this is what you can expect in terms of audio and video coming from that camera. Now, just to give you guys an idea of the built-in webcam and the dual microphone that's on either side of the camera, this is what you can expect. Now, for a Skype call, it's perfectly acceptable, or any other kind of uh, video service uh, that you might actually use. So, yeah, there you go. Here's a webcam. Another nice touch the X4 laptop comes with is backlit keys, which run at two brightness intensity levels depending on ambient lighting in your environment, giving you the option to both increase and decrease to suit your needs. Not only that, the keys themselves are sublit, making typing in the dark a very pleasant experience. So how about the important things like the keyboard, trackpad, performance and that screen? Let's start with the keyboard. The keys are of a good size and space nicely, they minimise any hefty typing errors. I also like the very prominent font used on the keys. The shift and the backspace keys are full size too. The spacebar however feels a little bit on the soft side for my liking, as do the F keys running along the top row. That's just my opinion, they just don't seem to have the same feeling or bounce as the other keys on the laptop. That aside, the typing experience is fantastic. It's almost as good as my Swift 3, be it a quick email or a lengthy documents. It's all very pleasant. As for the trackpad, it's a good size, but initially I had some problems with the cursor. As you can see, it kept stuttering, but after doing a few updates and rebooting the PC, this kind of stuttering of the cursor kind of stopped pretty much straight away after the initial reboot. And as you can see here, you can see me moving the mouse around very freely, and all it required was a quick reboot. The touchpad itself actually feels really nice. It's not on the same kind of glass premium level, but it is a very nice one, a considerable upgrade from the previous generation. 
In terms of performance with the 4GB of DDR4 RAM and the newer Intel N4100, things were pretty good considering it's one of their first attempts. They definitely did a lot of things right. For most people, I would say this would make a perfect secondary laptop or even a first laptop. Under moderate use or moderate to heavy use, battery was good for 5-6 to six hours, which is very respectable. And multitasking, for example, we say two 4K videos playing for some strange reason, plus a few other browser tabs open and various background services. CPU utilization was surprisingly well handled, staying around 70 to 60 to 70 percent most of the time. I mean, obviously, it peaked a few times while you opened apps, but it would settle down pretty quickly and the apps would not crash or stop or anything like that. The SSD obviously isn't the fastest out there in this price point, but it does do a decent job for a sub £200 laptop or around £200 laptop depending on the prices currently. Uh, Wi-Fi connection was also very good, no kind of uh, issues with drop connection over the period of a few weeks that I did test it. The main point to take away from all of this is with the newer uh, DDR4 RAM and the newer CPU, this actual laptop does do a really good job of multitasking, much better than I thought it could. The screen for me has been a little cause for research. I mean, I've seen some sites listing this as an IPS display 1080p, while I've seen uh, on some of the other sites that this is actually a TN panel. Now, I can tell you from my experience, this is definitely, in my opinion, not an IPS panel. As you can move the laptop around, you can see that the viewing angles, while well, you're changing, it's not perfect while you're looking at its center. It looks absolutely spot on. In terms of image quality overall, this is one of the best TN panels. I'm going to refer to it as a TN panel because that's what I think. Um, this is very good. I mean, the colors really do pop. The max brightness is actually good. And I've got nothing to complain about in terms of the quality of this 1080p panel. It is for me, aside the keyboard, the screen is one of the main draws for me with this laptop, especially for media consumption, if that's what you're going to be using it for. Um, in terms of anything else, I've got no complaints with this laptop. This is a great budget laptop. And honestly, with some of the uh, other options that I mentioned at the start of the laptop, if you're going to buy a Chromebook for this kind of price, then why not just buy a fully working Windows 10 laptop? And it's got better hardware in it, it's got a better CPU, it's got more storage. This is definitely one to consider. I mean, if you guys got any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comment section. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video.